inner baptism. That's why I've chosen to firstly include a meditation that we're all going to do together in just a moment. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell button. This video is about how to raise the sacred secretion. I'm always getting asked, how do I do it though? What should I be doing when the moon is in my sun sign? Should I be, you know, eating a vegan diet? Do I have to practice retention? Um, how many days for? And, you know, lots of questions that are based around the actual practical side of that. So this video is completely dedicated to that exact question. I do quickly want to remind you everyone that there is an entire chapter dedicated to the practical application of the sacred secretion within my book the god design chapter 33 is literally called how to raise the sacred secretion and it gives you all of the context that you need to kind of understand why you need to honour your temple body as much as possible. You know, the Bible tells us over and over again that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that is the truth. I do also have a practical course on Teachable, which again goes through the practical sides, guidelines and insights to what your practice should look like. So with all of that said, um, let's get into it. You need to be considering the fact that we all have two major inputs. So when seeking to preserve and raise the sacred secretion, these two inputs have to be nurtured or directed and overseen, um, if you like. We need to be caring for these two inputs with mindfulness, with love, with TLC, basically. So the first major input is your exterior inputs. So what we allow to affect any or all levels of our being from the outside inwards. So this includes food, drink, media, human influence and our environment. And the second major input is interior input. So what we allow to affect any or all levels of our being from the inside out. So this includes thought, emotions and sensations. So your exterior inputs include the foods and drinks that you choose to consume. As I said, saliva affects pH and the mineral content of your living waters. So the ocean and the living waters inside your body is your CSF, which is part of your lymph, and of course your blood and your procreative es um, essences and all of those things. Acidic pH diminishes our ability to regenerate. Therefore, Doing a Daniel fast, which is a natural vegan diet, or a juice fast for the duration of your practice are really good ways to optimize, purify, and support all of your vital systems. This is why recently I've been sharing very specific juice recipes and alkalizing water videos because each one of those recipes can assist with your practice, your own transformation. It can assist it marvelously. So I really do recommend that method. And if you opt for the juice method, 
this is the way that I would set it out for each day. So you would have your banana and onion chakra juice in the morning on an empty stomach. Then you would have your limitless alkalizing pH water throughout the day. Then you could have your nitric oxide booster at lunchtime. Another nitric oxide booster at tea time and then you can have your banana tryptophan DMT tea before you go to bed but not immediately before you go to bed because you'll be getting up and down to go to the toilet all night. So this regime is specifically designed to ensure that your body is in a prime position to feel the benefits of the practice but like I said earlier everyone is different so you should be always considering what your body and your intuition is telling you if you get too hungry then you have to have something to eat so if you opt for the Daniel fast a typical day could be the same as the juice fast but you just add in some meals as well. So you do the banana and onion chakra juice in the morning. Then you could have breakfast, something like overnight oats or porridge. Um, Again, limitless alkalizing water throughout the day. Um, And then a nitric oxide booster at lunchtime. That's very important. And you could have a chickpea and walnut walnut salad. So you're adding more tryptophan at lunchtime. Um, then for tea, you could have something like a homemade soup, vegetable soup, and add a few spices with Ezekiel bread. Um, and again, you can have the banana tryptophan tea um, just a short time after you've had your tea so that you've got enough time uh, before you go to bed. So you can adapt either of these templates for your own needs. You can have less food or more food. You will probably need to adapt the templates to suit your own needs and hunger levels because you might find the juices more filling than you imagine. Um, or vice versa. Just remember there is no ironclad structure. You can take uh, or leave what you like from these guidelines. If you're hungry on the juice fast, I recommend grabbing something like celery sticks and hummus or sliced apples with an organic nut butter. There are always options and it's good to be prepared before your practice time begins. So maybe a day before the moon is going into your specific sun zone, you would take, you know, an evening or whenever you have a couple of hours spare to make your juices and have them ready in the fridge or portions ready to defrost in the freezer. And you can just take them out of the freezer the night before and leave them on the windowsill in the moonlight or if it, if you live in a place where it's hot overnight I don't recommend that but here in England it's absolutely fine it'd be really chilled on the windowsill in the moonlight um but yeah what I'm basically trying to reiterate is the fact that having a preparation day will be really good for you because you'll feel mentally prepared and you'll know that you've got everything there to just support you and to be very grabbable and it just you know takes some of the stress out of um, having to do things at the last minute while you're already you know in in your phase in your practice time and there's one more thing I'd like to say about food and drink whether or not you're doing the juice fast or the Daniel fast or some kind of combination of the two together um, try and ensure that your last meal of the day um, is 12 hours minimum of 12 hours before your first meal 
the following morning before your first juice or your breakfast. Um, so for example, if I had my nitric oxide booster at six o'clock, I wouldn't have my banana chakra juice until 6 a.m. the next morning. But the banana tryptophan tea doesn't count. Um, so you could have that maybe at, say, 8 p.m. and then, you know, do some meditation before bed and go to bed whenever you usually would. But it's just more about like your stomach having a chance to really empty. So, you know, our unconscious mind really is in our mesenteric system in our stomach. So if that has nothing else to do, too much digestion and processing toxins, etc., then it puts us in a much better stead to reach some of those um, deeper ideas and tap into our subconscious and our unconscious mind while we're asleep or while we're in that hypnagogic state between wake and sleep and in the evening or vice versa between sleep and wake in the morning. I know for me those are very optimum times for receiving downloads and really clear insights um, from divine mind. So having a window of fasting will really, really help you along your way. So now that we've covered everything to do with food and drink and having that fasting window, let's circle back and have a look at some of the other exterior inputs. So again, these are the things that we allow to affect us on any or all levels of our being from the outside in. So things that we absorb, basically. So media is next. Now, exposure to toxic energies that lower our vibratory frequencies is definitely 100% detrimental to the process. It takes your train of thought to somewhere where you don't want to be going during these days. You don't want to be watching violent, stressful, sensual, low vibe content at this time. The hormones that that will cause your body to secrete have the opposite effect on our soul, our psyches, our vital fluids. So avoid all of that stuff. Obviously, people have to work and do their jobs and they can be stressful and things like that but I'm talking about necessity nobody needs to sit down in the evening and watch something that terrifies frightens or you know stresses them out um, or anything that you know induces like cortisol and epinephrine adrenaline I'm sure some of you will feel the same way that I do about the news um, I don't really engage in the news at any time, um, but especially when the moon is in my sun sign, I just put all of that into a box and, you know, it's not my business. It's not, I don't need to dwell on it or think about it or let it absorb into my being in any way, shape or form. So that is media covered. The next thing I want to talk about is human influence. So just as much as you can, you can aim to spend time in solitude if you have space for that because it will give you, um, you'll be in a better place to hear that inner voice, that divine mind, um, that subconscious voice coming from the Anahata heart space. Again, most people have jobs they're not always in control with who they can have to be around a lot of us have small children and you know that can be hair raising at times but as much as you can 
just avoid people who trigger negative so like fearful stressful alterations in your biochemistry i'm sure if you're listening to your body you know who those people are and what those situations look and feel like so i'm not saying that we should remove ourselves from all um of these situations and challenges at all times because sometimes we need to be in a little conflict and be challenged um, in ourselves so that we can actually grow and develop new characteristics but just for the practice days it's best if you can to just make your plans with those people that you know trigger you on other days not on these days. So the last part of the exterior um, inputs that I want to speak about is environment. So we want to aim to be in peaceful spaces. Again, you may have to go to work or care for elderly, sick family members or children. You might have commitments. So it's probably impossible to avoid all emotional and stressful triggers completely and that is fine but when you do feel triggered out of that bhakti that serenity that eden consciousness just breathe step away take a few deep breaths and aim to allow accept and flow through as much of it as possible Go with life's ebbs and flows and remember that acceptance, compassion and gratitude keep your vibratory frequencies really high, which allows for oxytocin heart expansions, which allows for heart and brain cohesion, CSF multiplication and of course the all important pineal metabolism literally everything that we sense feel or perceive affects our vibratory frequency and in turn our lymphatic systems and therefore our cellular bodies so low frequencies diminish our ability to regenerate now let's take a closer look at the interior inputs so what we allow to affect us on any or all levels of our being from the inside out so what we are emanating and this includes thought emotion and sensations you are the director of your thoughts so keep them high vibe set timers if you would like reminders to just bump you back into a place of acceptance, gratitude, peace and love. I set timers throughout the day with affirmations such as I am Eden, I am bliss, I am grateful and it's really funny because I I've come to absolutely love it when I get a little vibration in my pocket and I go oh yeah Whatever I'm doing at that moment, I can just recenter myself, remember to sync my electromagnetism, sync my brain heart cohesion, and remember that I am a magnet to draw nothing but goodness to myself because obviously if I am in that place of Eden, that place of bliss where everything grows and blossoms from, then that's exactly what I'm going to be attracting back in as well. I recommend practicing some form of praise as well. So praise basically just means gratitude. You can sing songs, you can chant mantras, Mantras are excellent for syncing the hemispheres of the brain, which hemi-syncing, which again, that causes a deep heart-brain resonance and the heart is the catalyst. The oxytocin is the catalyst for the CSF multiplication and for the pineal metabolism. 
So as well as practicing um, praise and staying in bhakti or Eden and bliss, um, I encourage you to pray. Pray openly, pray freely, set your intentions, offload your stresses, list what you're grateful for, and just spend time residing in a place of connection with the divine. You, like you are the director of your thoughts, you are also the director of your emotions. So flow like water, breathe, and let everything discordant just slip away freely. Some of you might remember that I recently shared all of the affirmations from a child's film or book called The Science of Being. Um, and they were meant for you to use during your practice time also. So they were also answering the question, how do I do it? So you can use those wonderful affirmations. They do build floods of living water within you, no doubt. I feel goosebumps all the time, tingles, vibrations in the body all the time when I am using those absolutely stunning um, affirmations. So that is why I shared them in that previous video. So the same as you are the director of your thoughts and your emotions, you are also, whether you know it or not, the director of all of your cells and atoms, your physical body. So stretch with yoga or just some other basic stretch that you prefer. Walk, run, dance, freestyle or Whatever mode of exercise suits you is absolutely fine. Your body was made to move, so move. Use it or lose it, as they say. Movement builds nitric oxide. What is nitric oxide? It's a trigger for heart expansions. Heart expansions create oxytocin, and we know what happens after that. Clearance release of trauma, all the old negative stale thoughts that keep cropping up and plaguing us, washed away, addictions washed away. This is all part and parcel. So some form of physical exercise is essential. The next thing to mention here is um, about sunlight or daylight more specifically it doesn't need to be physically sunny for you to take vitamin d and serotonin from the atmosphere but having natural light absorbed through the retina is amazing for pineal and pituitary health even if it's for five minutes in sometime during the middle of the day um, again, depending on where you live, I don't want you to walk out at midday and get sunburnt. But for me here in England, you know, those middle hours, so sometime between like an 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. is a really good time to get um, some daylight absorbed. Photons, photon energy, that's what it is. Natural balance, balanced photon light energy being absorbed into every cell of the body. The DNA in your cells acts as tiny antennas and when it picks up that light, it actually radiates more light out and it charges you like a butterfly. Sensation includes retention, semen retention, no fap. So don't think about even Thinking produces the same hormones as doing. So don't think or partake in sexual activities during your practice time. Um, you will unwittingly draw the vital essences downwards instead of encouraging them to flow upward. Um, and obviously when they flow upward, that's when 
all of those wonderful properties go towards the brain and we have increased consciousness, awakening and enlightenment. So thoughts, emotions and sensations should basically be watched over like a loving, mindful caretaker. And the best way to assist with the in word interior inputs so the inward soul and spirit self the emanating self is with meditations and breath work which help old thoughts emotions sensation programming habits um discordant patterns and addictions we all have patterns in our thought in our in the way that we think things that we tell ourselves that aren't true anymore or never were true you know they can be very habitual so the meditations and breath work are what clear space for new ideas a welcoming of fresh energy and yeah literally a revival within it's it's incredible you've got to do it to understand how powerful it is there is no testimony like your own testimony that is so true and I quoted something in one of my very early videos which was there's something on the other side of obedience which makes you wonder why you ever resist it so if you're not already trying these things out I really do encourage you to see for yourself to to judge something or to decide about something before you've tried it is basically a form of ignorance and I don't want to condemn anybody but it's really important to to know actually you know that word no know and gnosis there's nothing like actually knowing something thinking and theorizing about things trying to be objective and form an opinion before you've actually experienced a thing for yourself it's you know kind of redundant really so because breath work and meditations are such wonderful tools to help us with this whole process of regeneration and generation and the inner baptism that's why I've chosen to firstly include a meditation that we're all going to do together in just a moment but also I've put together some of my favorite meditation and breathwork techniques for you to use during your practice. Some of them are from very ancient traditions of the Essenes from Essene yoga traditions and the Rishis, the Kundalini yoga traditions and some of them are from more modern schools of thought which are basically the same thing but described in a different guise. Um, so I think you're really going to like it and we're just going to go into a very cool meditation now which will put you in really good stead to dive into your own practice. So this is a really simple practice uh, that easily promotes your heart and brain synergy and also the connection with your lower unconsciousness um, in your lower regions. Um, so what we're going to be doing is to be opening, slightly opening the neck, slightly pulling back the shoulders, slightly arching the base of the spine and then we're going to be contracting so our chin will come into our chest, our shoulders will come forward, our stomach will hollow in, I think you can see me well enough, and the bottom of your spine will curve basically and as we breathe in we're going to imagine a big pearl shiny 
of shiny bright white light coming down from the crown through the brow chakra through the throat through the heart down into the stomach the sacral and the root and we're going to be doing that while we breathe in so um, we'll do it to a count of seven because there's seven points to think of so the first step goes like this an inhalation for seven arching and opening everything out your central the central canal or your spinal cord literally floats in your csf so the more we open and lubricate it the more it's free to clear and regenerate all of the cells of our body because it is the central hub of our being so once we've done the inhale and we've imagined that light going all the way down so we'll do it again one two three four five six seven on the inhale so we've got this image in our minds of that light right down the base of our spine at this point and then what we want to do is to contract it's called mula banda in in kundalini yoga so it's the root lock so it includes your uh the muscles that stop you when you need to go for a wee it includes your anus muscles and it includes your stomach muscles so once you've done that big seven count inhalation and envisioned the light traveling all the way down you clench those three muscles and we'll hold again for seven and just imagine that light percolating within that root space where that corda equina is where all of those minerals are where all of that amazing salty light essence is down there at the base of the spine so just imagine that just percolating and then on the out breath we're going to basically contract the other way and as you do that you will imagine the light traveling back up from where it came so back up from the root sacral solar anahata throat brow crown and so I'll show you what an entire round looks like. So first the inhalation for seven. Then the hold for seven, clenching your root lock perineum anus stomach held firmly in for seven seconds and then we slowly begin to exhale and as you exhale just feel the bubbles rising up the light going back up to the top so i'll do that again with you now in for one two three four five six seven hold and visualize the light at the base of your spine for one two three four five six seven and inhale let your root lock go and see the light shining up your spine all the way to the crown of your head and then we go again we inhale for seven as we see the light going all the way down through each chakra and we hold for seven squeeze the root lock 
and then we exhale for seven. What? Visualizing that light rising up through every vertebrae. So all together, it will be a count of 21. Seven counts to watch the energy go down. Seven counts to hold and percolate the energy in the root while you clench your root lock. And a count of seven to exhale and curve as you visualize the energy rising back up. So what this does is it draws all of your focused energy, all of your intention to that central hub, that central information highway where all of those amazing hormones, anandamide, pinaline, DMT, mexamine, are all being secreted from the pituitary into that third CSF ventricle. And the more we vitalize the spine with the breath, the more nitric oxide we build, the more we open and expand the heart, the more oxytocin we build, the more oxytocin we build, the more we have this multiplying effect of cerebrospinal fluid, which is really, you know, the main key to this entire process because when the CSF multiplies, it seeps over and it bathes the brain and consequently the rest of the body with all of the biochemicals of enlightenment. And this, again, is a real and true practice that can 100% help you on your journey. So I will do three more rounds with you now. Um, and then I'd like you after you've done those three rounds to just sit still with your eyes closed and stay in silence and just take in that atmosphere that you've created. Marvel and reside and relax in that wonderful vibration that this practice creates within and therefore without you, without you, outside of you also. So I will sign off now. So thank you very much for watching. It is an honor to journey with you all. And of course, the links to books and courses and other resources are all in the description box below. I will say thank you and namaste and go into those three rounds of this wonderful Christ oil raising meditation.